name is Dana. I am a health coach, a certified personal trainer, and a licensed cosmetologist. I am a fan of finding out what's in my cosmetics, and I thought I'd share my findings with you. I will be linking my sources in the description, so let's get started. Today I decided I wasn't going to feature any particular product. So let's just go on to today's featured ingredient. It is cetyryl alcohol, also known as cetosterol alcohol. It is manufactured combining cetyl alcohol and sterol alcohol. It appears as a white solid, sometimes as flakes. It comes from coconut and palm oil. I believe it can come from manufactured ingredients, but for the most part, it comes from coconut and palm oils. The purpose of cetyryl alcohol is it is used as an emulsifier that blends water with oil. It's also used as an emollient, which basically creates a film on your skin to keep the moisture in. Although it's an alcohol, it's not a drying type. It's actually considered a fatty alcohol. So unlike drying out your skin, like regular liquid alcohols, fatty alcohols, like I said, helps to keep the moisture in your skin. The EWG rates this product as a one on the scale, which means it's for the most part, not very harmful. It's low in the subject of cancer, allergies, and immunotoxicity, development and ingredient toxicity, and use restrictions. It's traditionally used in co many cosmetics, such as face creams, body lotions, sunscreens, makeup primers, serums, deodorants, shampoos, conditioners, <laughs> to name a few. There's a lot. I have put a link in the description as usual. The concern for this ingredient is although it's an emollient, it has been shown to cause irritation and possibly allergic reactions in some people, especially for people with leg ulcers. That's pretty random. So I don't know why leg ulcers was so specific in the findings that I came across. So if you have leg ulcers, you might want to find a substitute. Also for people with sensitive skin, you need to make sure that this isn't in your products. People with very sensitive skin who have reactions to it, for the most part, the ingredient itself is considered safe in cosmetics. Should you use it? I don't know, should you? <laughs> Like I always say, it's completely up to you. If you read many blogs about it, um, especially the ones written by organic skincare companies, you'll find that they just rebuke the use of cetyl, cetyryl alcohol all the way, mainly because of the irritation that they can cause. I have included a blog by the company Anne-Marie Gianni Skincare, and it explains why they don't use fatty alcohols in their formulation, which the reason was irritation. The ingredient has been cleared by the FDA here in the United States that it is considered a safe ingredient to use in cosmetics, as well as in Europe, I believe it is safe to use. They also use it in their cosmetics. So if you have really sensitive skin, you may want to either stop using it altogether if you're already using it or just watch your skin and it's considered safe. So if you don't have any reactions to it, then it, again, it's up to you if you want to completely stop using these products or if you want to limit your use of these products. Again, you're an adult, it's completely up to you. If you're absolutely trying to stick to organic, natural, safe 
clean ingredients in your skin. The whole, if I can't eat it, I won't put it on my skin mentality. Then you'll want to stay away from products with this ingredient. In my last video, I went over the whole, if I can't put it on my, if I can't eat it, I won't put it on my skin belief. So you can check that out if you haven't already. <laughs> there are substitutions. They tend to be hydrogenated oils, such as sweet almond, jojoba, and coconut oils. If you're a formulator, you might want to use these kinds of fatty ingredients as an, as an emulsifier or use other emulsifying ingredients. Although I try to use products that have less ingredients made by industrial chemical companies, I'm not even going to say that aren't manufactured or that aren't chemicals because that's a whole other thing. That's a whole can of worms that I can get into when it comes to semantics. Chemicals, organic, natural, what's really safe, what isn't. It's just, that's why I do these videos, just to show you that what is in cosmetics, you see these crazy names and you're like, what is that? I'm trying to limit harmful ingredients. We'll say harmful. I'm trying to limit harmful ingredients. And I don't know what this is because it has this weird fancy name. That's why I do these videos is because I want to make sure that I, I want to know what these names are. And I'm sure you do too. So that's probably why you're here. So welcome. Anyway, like I was trying to say before I went on my tangent, I am trying to lessen the amount of harmful ingredients in my makeup or my cosmetics. So I, I did find that many of the products I use do contain satiral alcohol. Um, so far, I haven't had any reactions to it. So I'm not really worried about this ingredient. Uh, some of you just may refuse to buy anything that contains fatty alcohols like this one, which is fine. Do what's best for your skin and your body as always. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to have a featured ingredient, but this video was super short. <laughs> Anyway, I decided I would go and look at my products that I use, the cosmetics that I use. And the first is a Resurrection Polypeptide Cream by Coco Kind. And satiral alcohol is actually listed as like one of the further ingredients, like ingredients towards the bottom. So I really like this cream. It's like a thicker cream. I use it at night. It's very hydrating. I love it. Feels really good on my skin. So that's what I use. And then I bought this shampoo or actually conditioner. This one is Rhyme and Reason. Sulfate free. Okay. Uh, volume and boost conditioner for fine flat hair. My hair is getting finer. <laughs> it used to not be so fine, you know, age. But actually, satiral alcohol is listed as the second ingredient. So it's water and then satiral alcohol. And unfortunately, a lot of my other products come in boxes. So the ingredients are on the boxes instead of directly on, on the packaging itself like this one the polypeptide cream it came in a box and I did save the box just so I could look to see what ingredients I would want to feature next so that's a little secret of mine of how I come about what I want to research next so again I don't have any reactions to satiral alcohol I'm not worried about it that's something that you want to use or not, 
again, like I always say, completely up to you. But that was it. I couldn't find anything. Again, my lipsticks and all my other... I didn't see it on my Kosas, Kosas Revealer Concealer. So um, it's not in there. And I think that was the only box I saved of my cost, like makeup that I use. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comment section what you think about fatty alcohols. Is this a new concept to you? Will you continue to use products with satirical alcohol? Drop a comment below. Yes, again, I do read them when they come in. Many times, it's crickets, but that's okay. I love you anyway. <laughs> Keep an eye out for more videos about other ingredients. And you can also visit my website to check out more stuff. And it's pretty cool. If you haven't checked out my website, I'll link it in the description. And I've seen some creators that have a shop button on their YouTube videos. Maybe. I'll have to look into that. Everything I do, it's, um, it's a whole learning process. So I'm learning and processing. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this video and have a blessed day.